In one of my previous videos titled Breaking the Kill Chain, a defensive approach, we took a look at the seven steps an attacker generally goes through in completing a successful attack. These seven steps highlight the major milestones and techniques an attacker will go through on their way to the end objective. But arguably, no step in the cybersecurity kill chain is more important than reconnaissance. The information gathered during this phase is a building block in which the rest of the kill chain is based on. Open Source Intelligence, or OSINT for short, is the practice of collecting publicly available information using a variety of different sources. For an attacker that is beginning to plan out their attack, OSINT tools and techniques are the first step in their journey. In this video, we're going to cover the OSINT framework, methodology, and tools we could use during this portion of the attack. We'll then wrap up the video by talking about how blue teams should use this information to protect their public information from being in the wrong hands. But before we dive into the topic, please take a moment to hit like in the video to give me a boost in the YouTube algorithm, and subscribe if you want to see my future cybersecurity kill chain series where we'll take a deeper look into every step of the kill chain. Now let's dive into passive information gathering using OSINT. During the reconnaissance stage of the kill chain, we're trying to obtain information that will guide the kind of attack we later use. OSINT, or Open Source Intelligence, provides a framework of tools and techniques that we can use to gather information about our target using publicly available resources. OSINT is really about the practice of using public information as reconnaissance on our target. In our case, we're interested in anything that can be used for later attacks, such as information on network equipment, employee email addresses, or social media pages. The OSINT process starts with something you know about the target. Something as simple as a company name can be used as a starting point from which we work from to acquire something else that could be leveraged. We then define what kind of information we're after. For example, if we're after user credentials, we know that we need to acquire an email address and possibly social media accounts before we can send a targeted spear phishing campaign. The third step is where we use the tools we'll discuss here shortly to collect information about our target. As we'll see next, different tools have different purposes, so knowing how to obtain the information you're after is key to the investigation. Next, we analyze the data we collected and in some cases use what we found as a starting point for further analysis. For this video, we're going to focus on the tools and resources that we can use to collect and analyze public data, particularly with understanding what tools can be used for different types of information. Perhaps the best place to start is with the OG of open source intelligence, Multigo. Multigo is a powerful data mining tool that can be used to search thousands of online sources to find connections between pieces of information. This is accomplished using a series of transform steps that essentially automate the lookup process while providing you a visual layout of the information as it's learned. For example, we can start off by typing in the domain name of an organization and right clicking to select the transform or task we would like to run on the object. We then move to the next transform task for, based off of that piece of information. In our example, we can use a domain name to find DNS records that point to a real public server. From here, we can transform those servers to IP addresses and then easily find blocks of IP space that also belongs to the same owner. Part of Multigo's power is in the visualizations and connections to pieces of information as it's obtained. This is extremely useful as we move on to later steps in the kill train in plotting out these areas that we want to focus on for our attacks. While the learning curve is a bit steep, Multigo is extremely powerful. It also provides third-party plugins to support queries of other data feeds like Shodan that you can use as a transform action. The Harvester is a slightly different kind of tool because it focuses on popular OSINT search engines like Google, LinkedIn, and Shodan as a main source of data. However, this insanely yet powerful tool can be quite useful in finding out valuable data about our target. For example, you can see here that all we have here is a simple query using a host name. In our case, I want to search LinkedIn profiles that are associated with paloaltonetworks.com. What you end up with is a list of names and job titles of people that work for Palo Alto based off of this LinkedIn query. We could also change our source from LinkedIn to Netcraft to then get a full list of domains and IP addresses using the public information without ever even touching the target. Additionally, you can use Google hacking techniques as part of your search query and even use a dash S option to query Shodan on a discovered host for even more data based off of what Shodan can provide. Another powerful but lesser known OSINT tool is Spiderfoot, which consolidates hundreds of data feeds into a single search. Unlike Multigo, where you have to specify the specific action you want to run on a given target, Spiderfoot is like a Google search that queries nearly all the publicly available OSINT sources available. Spiderfoot does not come included in Kali, but there is a GitHub link in the video description with instructions for loading this up in minutes. Using Spiderfoot, it's as easy as typing in what we know about the target, such as a username or a company website, and then selecting the type of scan that we want to run. 
With hundreds of modules and API connections to various OSINT resources, they also make it easy by grouping them based on the kind of information that you'd like to obtain. If you select Passive Scan, it will not send out any direct queries from your machine, and so it'll remove those modules that attempt to make direct connections. While I found Spiderfoot to be much more intuitive than Multigo, it doesn't visualize the data anywhere near as good. However, as you can see here from the results, everything is categorized in a useful way that makes analyzing it relatively simple. Multigo and Spiderfoot are fantastic OSINT tools that should be leveraged during our investigation, but they're certainly not all-encompassing. Different tools may be needed for different things. So here's a brief overview of some of the other tools in our OSINT disposal. BabelX is a multi-language search tool that can span across many resources in different languages. This is particularly useful when you're researching targets that may be in a different country or use a different language. Recon NG is more of a development tool based on Python that allows you to develop the kind of searches you want to use based on modules. The benefit here for developers is the ability to automate the OSINT process into your applications by leveraging the Recon NG framework. Metagufo is meant to extract metadata from public documents. This is extremely useful for researching things like business owner information or finding open documents that were not secured correctly. Of course, no OSINT research is complete without mentioning traditional sources like Google Hacking, Shodan, The Wayback Machine, and Netgraph. The reality is that there's simply not enough time to cover all of these in great detail, but they are worthy of having in your OSINT research toolbox. I'd also encourage you to check out and bookmark OSINTframework.com, as this provides an excellent visualization and updated list of links that can come in handy during your investigation. We'll find here a massive list of OSINT links that are categorized and subcategorized for easy lookups. Each category you see expands to show the subcategories and their corresponding tools. Now, there's no question of the value good OSINT research can have for attackers and red teams as they prepare their journey through the kill chain. From a blue team or defensive perspective, it's equally as important that we understand what information is out there about not just our organization, but employees as well. If you want to be proactive about defending against OSINT research on your organization, start by implementing regular scans of your organization and its employees. Make time to analyze if the information that you found must be held public or can it be removed altogether. And if you want to take it a step further, you can sign up for dark web monitoring services that will notify you as soon as your organization's information has been made available either publicly or in dark web sites and forums. This is a breeding ground for would-be attackers that will use this key piece of information about your organization onto later parts of the attack. Regular OSINT scans should be performed to understand the data and what is potentially available to would-be attackers, as well as understanding how the data can be used to harm your organization or its users. So that does it for this video, guys, and I hope you found it informative. As always, please comment, hit like, subscribe if you want to stay on top of our latest releases here at the CISO Perspective. And you could always reach me at andy at the CISO Perspective.com.